Again, welcome. Uh, we'll talk. Uh, let's bring advance this. Here's our objectives tonight. Really, just an overview of probate court, its jurisdiction, its functions. We'll talk about state planning for every family, and number of documents that have you look at. And uh, Jamie Robinson should have sent you the uh, the documents. And we'll discuss elder law, uh, alcohol and drug, mental illness affects all of our families. We'll talk about the civil uh, commitment process. Let's see what else we got. I was trying to get in. Trying to get back to my waiting room. Couple others joining us. And we'll have some points to tribute. Uh, so here's sort of an overview. We'll do a state planning elder law. Uh, a lot of people always looking for the probation officer. We, I'll show you what probate court does there with the marriage, the civil, the adult guardianship in our state division. Talk a little bit about our problem solving courts. We hope people get the treatment they need, but if not, uh, get involved in the criminal justice system or created some courts that can help them. And if you lost a loved one, we'll talk uh, about the estate administration process. Anyway, good evening again. Here's our a little organizational chart to let you know uh, what we all do. The estate division over there on the left, we do about 2,200 estates and about 3,500 open. Uh, important thing here to just remember is uh, I've got a supervisor there, Allison Atwood, and then we have five estate clerks and each of the estate clerks has an ending number, two ending numbers, like Tina Groom says, all cases ending in zero and five, Sharon one and six. Uh, that's so we can have an even uh, workflow. And uh, we also believe, believe in customer service. And so one clerk will assist the family from beginning to end. And we'll get a look at the contact information here shortly. And then that way you don't have to go back through the switchboard. Our commitment division, we do involuntary commitments for alcohol, drug, mental illness. And we do about 1,800 of those a year, almost 2,000. Uh, guardianship and conservatorship, we want you to avoid this. And uh, by the use of a healthcare power of attorney or by the use of business power of attorney or a trust. Uh, I mentioned the four problem solving courts. And then we've got a happy area, our marriage license division. And then you'll see our, our court staff there. And again, here's our contact information. Uh, Jamie will send all this out to you. Uh, the lesson here is that you can get directly to the clerk that should help you by calling directly to their number and not having to go through a switchboard. And you'll see some have cell numbers on days that they work from home. Uh, they will answer uh, using that cell phone. Again, we're located down at the four corners of law. We've got the, the mayor's office on the lower left. That's local law, state law by our, our courthouse there on the bottom right. And then a uh, federal court uh, by the uh, courthouse and, and post office there. Then the highest law, which is the church. All right, who gave the name of the four corners of law? If we we're in person, I'd have a candy bar to give you. Anybody take a guess? Last name starts with an R. First name starts with an R. Believe it or not, it's another clue. And got a place in Myrtle Beach and a TV show. You, you, it was uh, Robert Ripley, believe it or not, gave it the name. Now, then and now, it used to be the state capitol. It is now uh, our historic courthouse capital moved uh, to Columbia. Uh, our state courthouse, we're very proud of, was done by an Irish architect named James Hoban. You'll see him sitting there with a picture of the Leinster House uh, behind him, uh, a model of our courthouse, and then a bust of George Washington when President Washington visited our city, I like the work Hoban did, and Hoban uh, beat out others in, in, in a design competition and garnered uh, to do the White House, which is on the left there. Uh, on the left picture, you'll see us dedicating a monument in Callan, Ireland. Yeah, that's my son Joseph there in the plaid pants. Our luggage didn't make it, so we had to 
by some fans. <laughs> He's not sure what to do with the uh, with the Irish girl there. Uh, again, we're in two different buildings. The state division's on the left and the commitment division's on the right. Uh, we are the holy city and they didn't want a seven or eight story building uh, blocking the views of our uh, of our vir vir virtual, I mean, of our church uh, steeples. All right, what's the highest basketball court in the land? Might take a guess. Let's see. Highest basketball court. Uh, Denver. Not Denver. It's actually the U.S. Supreme Court. Above the U.S. Supreme Court chamber, guess what? There's a basketball court. And I made two shots there and retired. So can't play when they're having a court session. But uh, again, they got a basketball gym up there. This was my mentor and, and uh, Jamie Robinson. Uh, we both worked for him. Uh, Morris Rosen, very much a Southern gentleman. Estate planning, let's talk about that. A very important area. And we got Mother's Day and Father's Day coming up. And uh, the children can pay for mom or dad's estate planning. And the attorney's duty is still to uh, the client, to the, to the parent. Uh, we don't want your will looking like this. On the left there, we got a little will, but one sentence. On the right there, uh, sort of my, my list to go to Costco. So again, we just want uh, uh, to get with an attorney and I'll show you a little bit later how to select an attorney. Again, it's talking to family and family, family members and friends, but there's also a service that you could use. Again, we want you to consider 11 documents and Jamie would have sent these out to you. I uh, don't want to make you lawyers tonight, but we want to learn a few concepts. Uh, and the first concept is that of probate and non-probate property. Now, probate property is controlled by the will, or if you don't have a will, uh, we have the intestacy statute, uh, or we can uh, have non-probate property, and that property is controlled by third-party contracts, such as a joint account with right of survivorship, uh, such as, uh, that's what I was trying to get in. Let me uh, get that, man. Uh, life insurance where you designate a beneficiary. Uh, so there's a number of ways to uh, transfer a property. Uh, just like there's a number of ways sometimes to drive to a different place. Uh, there's no correct way, just the way that you want to do it. And the attorney will sit down with you. The first thing they'll have you complete is a checklist. Uh, very important that you pull out your source documents and see exactly uh, how you own the property or the account. Many times we think it's one way, and then lo and behold, it's not a probate asset, it's a non-probate or vice versa. Uh, so we want to do a checklist. And again, uh, the goal of the attorney is to carry out your wishes uh, to make a will, which is our second document. Uh, you have to have capacity, and that's determined by a three-part test, which is, uh, do the, you know the objects of your affection? But basically, do you know your family and friends? Uh, generally, do you know what you own? Uh, just a ballpark. And then third, who you want to leave it to. Uh, and you can have a lucid moment. And the ability to make a will is less than that to make a contract. Uh, if we look at number two and number six, uh, I always recommend that a person have a trust. And a trust is a vehicle, sort of like a corporation or partnership uh, that allows you to um, state in writing how some assets are gonna be handled and then say when they're gonna be given to an individual. Uh, for kids, uh, children would generally recommend uh, that you give them one third at say 25, one third at 30, one third at 35, with the hope that they learn along the way and don't squander everything you leave to them. Um, if it's an intestate state and it goes into conservatorship, uh, the, uh, the ward of the minor, the protected person, uh, once they turn 18 are entitled to that money. And uh, sometimes it's hard to figure out if a, if a 18 year old can handle $100,000 or so. So just think about that. So there's two ways, have a trust inside your will or go ahead and set up a revocable living trust with provisions uh, on what happens when you pass. Uh, and that'll act as a will substitute. Uh, even if you do the revocable living trust like number six there, 
uh, the attorney will have you do what's called a pour over will. And that will just uh, puts anything that you did not put in the trust into the trust. Um, sometimes you buy an additional asset, you put it in individual name, uh, that would be a probate asset. And then you could be, have it controlled by the pour over will and then get it into revocable and in trust. Uh, a will, we have a number of players here. The person making the will is called a testator. The person that's in charge of the estate is called a personal representative. It used to be executor, executrix, now called a personal representative. And the person you leave property to is called uh, devisees. Uh, and then if you don't have a will, uh, they're uh, called heirs. Again, uh, you want to make sure you have a trust inside your will or pour it over to your trust. And then you also want to make sure uh, that you uh, have a residuary clause. That's a catch-all clause that if I haven't specifically devised something, I now uh, catch it in this residuary clause. But an attorney will help you with all of these things. Let's look at item three there, which is a business uh, durable power of attorney. This is good during lifetime. Uh, once you pass, uh, it uh, it ends. Uh, the, the ability of a power of attorney to help, uh, you know, if I'm in the hospital battling one of my 15 kidney stones, uh, my wife can pay the bills uh, if I'm under medication or can't act. Um, and again, a power of attorney, a durable one, business one, sort of like a will, it's unique to each individual and we'll have separate uh, provisions or powers in there. Again, it ceases at death. It is the one document that has to be recorded and it needs to be recorded at the Register of Deeds office. Uh, uh, the next document we're talking about, the healthcare power of attorney, excuse me, does not have to be recorded. Again, like it indicates, uh, you can specify who you want to make those healthcare decisions for you. You'll see that the healthcare power of attorney that Jamie sent you is what we call a statutory document. It's a form right out of our, our code of laws. So it's the same for everybody in South Carolina. And the beauty of that is it allows the EMS, the doctor, the, uh, the nurse to see the same document each time. Uh, the document though is a, a form document. It also has great flexibility from uh, minimum care all the way to maximum care. Um, most people may choose grant discretion to your agent to make the decisions. And that's a healthcare power of attorney. Another document, uh, Declaration of Desire for Natural Death, uh, also known as the Living Will. It gets confused with the Living Trust, which deals with property. The Living Will deals with our wishes uh, uh, when the end is near. Uh, and so it's a, a good document uh, to take, uh, to state your wishes and also to take that burden off of your family uh, from having to make that decision. Uh, we've all seen the cases, you know, Terry Schiavo, Karen and Quinlan, uh, Nancy Cruzan, and you'll see the importance of having a little living will. One of those cases, the Cruzan case, went up to the U.S. Supreme Court, and they said it's such a step you're taking uh, that it needs to be in writing. So that's why we have the living will. Again, it's a statutory document right out of our code of laws so that the medical doctors, healthcare workers all see the same document. We talked about the revocable living trust. Uh, another document is this five wishes. Uh, the five wishes uh, is part of a national movement. All right, what are the two certainties in life? The two certainties in life. We just did one, we just paid our taxes. Okay, and then death is the other. And the goal of uh, this aging with dignity, this nonprofit out of Florida, is to uh, get people to talk about death and dying. All right, who's been in a courtroom? Have I been in a courtroom? Yes. Okay. Uh, must be a lot of speeders in here. I'm just teasing. No. Uh, anyway, what's the two rules for jokes in a courtroom? Two rules. <coughs> Only the judge tells them. That's rule one. That's <laughs> rule two. You have to laugh, okay? Try to make everybody smile a little bit tonight. Um, all right, what's the nickname for Florida? What's the nickname? Anybody on here from Florida tonight? What's the nickname for Florida? Sunshine State. 
That's it. How about an elder law? What? Uh, in the elder law field, what is the nickname for Florida? Snowbird. So I've got a sister living down there. I tease her. It's known as God's waiting room. God's <laughs> waiting room. Okay. <laughs> We're all, we're all terminals, so it's all going to happen one day. Another document that's very useful is this DNR, a do not resuscitate order. It allows you to the doctors, to give the doctors an indicate. Um, an example is I lost my brother to cancer. I uh, knew it was going to take him. He had a DNR in case he had a heart attack today. Uh, it could end the suffering rather than dying from the cancer, you know, a matter of days. Again, it's executed by two doctors. It's, uh, and you'll see a lot of these documents, uh, they move from the doctor's office over to the lawyer's office. Another useful document is Physician's Order for Life Sustaining Treatment, it's called a Pulse or Post, and some other states call it a Medical Order for Life Sustaining Treatment. Uh, again, it's sort of a combination DNR, Five Wishes, I'd say Living Will, Healthcare Power Attorney. Again, another way to indicate uh, what you uh, want or desire at end of life. Uh, and an organ donation, we'll talk about that. You can do that in your five wishes. And I'll show you an uh, organization set up by Dr. McManus. And then we have the safe cremation law. More and more people are choosing cremation. Our funeral home directors say that uh, they didn't know how to spell the word 30 years ago. And that's the majority of their business. And we tragically lost uh, James Jordan, Michael Jordan's dad. I believe he was murdered in North Carolina, body dumped in South Carolina. Uh, they didn't have the space to keep him, took a dental mold and realized weeks later it was Michael Jordan's dad. Anyway, uh, our state stepped in and passed the safe cremation law. If cremation is something you're considering, uh, get with your uh, funeral home director and then do a pre-need authorization uh, or get with your attorney, also get with your attorney and put it in your state planning documents, such as your five wishes. This is my mom. Uh, always important to have somebody advocate for you. A year before this picture where she's uh, with her grandson who's getting married that day. Um, she had terrible back pain, crying in the hospital, couldn't get her comfortable. And they basically told us it was time to let her go. Uh, we advocated for and showed that uh, her mind was sharp before she went in. We got an outside person to do an epidural and uh, she lived another year. So always been very important have somebody advocating for you or your loved one. Uh-oh, uh let me see. This man got run over a steamroller. Y'all ready for a little humor here? Sure. <laughs> me tell me whether to keep it or not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got to give me a thumbs down or a clap or something. One of the yeah. okay, very good one. Anyway, that's my British humor. But you know, one night I was working late down there at uh, who's been to the Dock Street Theater? Dock Street Theater. It's on Church Street on a one-way street. I was crossing the street one night, looked the one way that cars should be coming, almost got hit, and uh, that's about who hit me. Prince Charles, he was in town. So I was looking Did for really? my invite. Really, he was, uh, somebody was driving the wrong, the other way for security reasons. And I happened to be crossing the street right at the same time. He waved to me, so we're real close. I'm looking for my invitation to the coronation, but it hadn't come in yet. Um, I wouldn't story you. If you wanna help others and uh, don't wanna uh, bear the cost, uh, the Coastal Community Foundation is a great resource in our community. Uh, you can set up a self-directed uh, charitable uh, gift foundation uh, under their umbrella uh, to help others uh, without bearing the cost. Your churches, universities all have similar ability to help you. And we're blessed with the Center for Heirs Property. Uh, they help uh, individuals who own heirs property get clear title either by probating the estates or taking or doing a quiet title action in the Master and Equities Court. Uh, they're now located up in uh, North Charleston at the Opportunity Zone. 
They also uh, do wills clinics. Uh, so a great resource in our community. And they cover all of Charleston County, most of the uh, Eastern uh, coast of, of South Carolina. Uh, Reverend Clemente Pinckney uh, was instrumental in getting that right of first refusal. So an heir has a right to prop buy the property before it's sold to a developer. Here's how uh, you can select an attorney called Martindale Hubble. It's a free service and it lists attorneys around the country, lists the uh, peer rating, A, B, and the highest. Gives you their academic credentials. A good way to select an attorney is the use of Martindale. If you cannot afford an attorney, there's a number of services that can help. One is Charleston Pro Bono, and you'll see the uh, qualification limits there and a phone number if you want to call and ask. There's also South Carolina Legal Services, and you'll see the number to apply there. And also Charleston Legal Access. Uh, they just celebrated their seventh year. So for those that don't qualify for the other two, uh, make them because you make too much money, but it's hard to afford an attorney, uh, they'll do it at a, a, generally a fraction of the cost. And that's Charleston, they do it on a sliding scale. And that's Charleston Legal Access. Organ donation, Dr. McManus was instrumental in setting up this Donate for Life. Uh, go to their website and they have a number of good useful documents. And this uh, American family, California family lost their son uh, while traveling in Italy. Uh, they donated his body and it changed the culture there in Italy uh, who really didn't have organ donation at the time. Elder law, um, we're all facing this and uh, understanding each of these areas. Uh, hopefully we have long-term care insurance that can help us pay our bills. Uh, but if not, there's also a Palmetto Project, which will give you for free information about health coverage options, including Medicare, 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 uh, private insurance. Uh, again, I'll give that number a call. They'll actually do home visits and come to you. And we also uh, now have a Department on Aging. It's a cabinet level position. And Dr. Connie Munn heads that up. And they also have a number of services. So. If you're caring for a senior, I'd have you look at this website. And then also the Trident Area Agency on Aging. Uh, they have this family caregiver support program. And so they have a, a lot of resources that can help you uh, if you're caring for a loved one. If you need a trustee or a fiduciary, uh, can't afford to, you know, one of the banks, uh, Family Services Doing Businesses Origin uh, is also a good, good resource. And then if you're VA, um, there's this caregiver support program that they sponsor, and there's a number if, if anyone's a veteran or caring for a veteran. Remember, take a ski vacation. Any skiers here? Who's my skier? Nope. Nope. Well, nope. after tonight, we want everybody to be a skier, and that means spend the kids' inheritance. <laughs> and God's going to call us. So. Think about uh, spending it. it. May not be taking a, a trip, but it may be uh, just helping somebody else. Okay, with a car, with maybe college, getting married, that type of thing, an apartment. Yeah. If the kids are not nice to you, guess what you can do? You go if you love your pet, you can leave it all to your dog or your cat. And again, we had two dogs in Charleston County. They got nine hundred thousand dollars. Couldn't be kept that set on a chain. Um, and another. Dog down on Kiowa got a home. So if your kids aren't being nice to you, just tell them you're gonna leave it to the dog or the cat. Okay. <laughs> the state administration, we'll talk a little bit more about this. Um, we've got three ways, generally a summary proceeding. If the estate value is under $25,000 and no real estate, you can open and close it 30 days after the person has passed. And that's a summary proceeding. Second is normal administration, majority of our cases. Uh, and we have a creditor's period where you got to publish it uh, once a week for three consecutive weeks. And that creditor's period uh, starts on when the first publication is made. And we're doing the creditor's notice uh, to give information uh, or not notice that uh, someone has passed and we're probating a the state. They then have creditors eight months to come forward. Uh, and again, uh, 
we're giving notice to what we call interested persons, uh, which made up by those people named in a will called devisees, or those who would take if there's not a will, and those are called heirs, and then also creditors, uh, which we publish for. We also do contested cases, jury trials, fewer cases, uh, but, uh, uh, and Jamie, I'll get you to add fewer cases, and also uh, jury trials uh, are, are allowed. Um, oh. Questions? Yes. Probate. All right, let's talk about the probate process. If you're probating a state, you used to have to come down in person. Uh, you can now do it online. And we've got this easy filing system. Uh, we're the first and only in South Carolina probate court with electronic filing. Uh, we're open 24 7 anywhere in the world, except for North Korea. We're trying to get into North Korea. We haven't got in there yet. Uh, and so we've got a love program for your marriage application, which is this live online virtual e-marriage application. Well, Jamie's working on North Korea, talking to Dennis Rodman, trying to get us. Uh, the point is you can probate your state anywhere. If you've got a smartphone, you can probate it. If you have a computer at home, maybe in a scanner, you could probate. If not, you can go to one of our local libraries. There is a fee to use the service. And it's seven dollars, uh, one time seven dollar fee, and then you can file as many documents as you like. Uh, by the time you drive down here, or pay for postage, you'll come out well ahead uh, using the easy filing. Again, you can uh, go to one of our libraries, uh, or Tranto, Edisto Island, to throw in uh, the main branch there. Um, so any of our libraries are set up, and we're getting our senior center set up. <coughs> Excuse me so that you can also do your easy filing from there. Here I am at the uh, Otranto Library up in North Charleston, uh, demonstrating easy filing. And even I can uh, operate it and you can easy file with the court here. And what's coming through our court? What are the trusts and states that are out there? Uh, we've got the Charleston Nine, we lost them tragically. I grew up on St. Andrew's Playground with Billy and Randy Hutchinson. Uh, we found out that most of them uh, believed it was on, it was bad luck to get a will, and they're the ones running running into the burning building. We're running out, and so we're trying to make sure all of our first responders uh, have their estate planning, have a will done. Uh, we had the Emmanuel Nine that were murdered just blocks from where I am. Uh, they showed us that love conquers hate. There was no violence. Uh, they were very uh, forgiving individuals. Uh, you'll also see Reverend Clemente Pink there in the middle. He was instrumental in getting that right of first refusal. Uh, on the top right, is Cynthia Graham Hurd is a local librarian. The West Ashley Library is named after her. And the first family, they, uh, my son collects autographs. They needed my autograph to amend their trust. So it's a public document. He got a few more anyway. That's Clay Matthews there top right, who was the boxing coach at the Citadel, and then a lot of family members played in the NFL. We just had the NFL draft. Now, this individual won the Masters. Very important that you tell uh, the 1938 Masters. Thank you, Jamie, for adding that. And uh, very important that you tell your family members everything that's going on in your family. He lost a son tragically to a car accident uh, after the son had come watch him play in a pro tournament. Uh, and his attorney wasn't aware of that because the will was drafted and uh, we had to uh, reform the trust and the will so that the predeceased uh, child, the son, his children would receive some, uh, would receive a share of the estate. It's very important to tell your attorney everything about uh, the estate and you. Uh, this baseball player allegedly threw a World Series. Uh, to a baseball collector, his signature, his autograph was worth a lot of money. He was illiterate for the most part, didn't sign many documents. He did sign his will, and they sued the probate judge to get the will back. Uh, but the Supreme Court said, no, uh, your original will stays with the court. So if you're famous, your will would stay with the court. The Council of Sardis Plato, benefiting our community, uh, used a local attorney. 
And I wonder if she went through Martindale uh, to find that local attorney. You can name your trust anything. James Brown named his trust the I Feel Good Trust. Still under some litigation over there in Aiken. Let's talk about marriage licenses. With before the love program, we did about 4,500. We now do about 5,000 marriage licenses. Uh, not 5,000, about 7,000. So we're up a whole bunch. And uh, this is our program, this live online virtual e-marriage application. You don't have to come downtown. You, your, your family member can uh, sign up anywhere. The license is good, only in South Carolina. Jamie threw this in there. So it begins. I didn't like the tone of your, I do. Uh, <laughs> uh, who's coming through? You may have seen him on CNN. Uh, I think they also went to family court. And so a lot of actors, actresses are coming to Charleston. Everybody wants to get married here. And some of my favorite ones are coming down to pick up their marriage license. And look at the right there. What's it called? Marriage license division and also commitment division. So I may reverse, make the commitment huh? larger and marriage a little bit smaller. Anyway, we hope people will get treatment uh, voluntarily. Uh, and there's basically three ways. Hopefully they go to voluntary treatment or they can, if not, we'll have involuntary treatment. And uh, we've got two agencies, one for drugs and alcohol, and that's called DOTIS. And the other is our mental health center, which is also run by the state. Uh, we do civil commitments, which is an involuntary process uh, closed to the public. Uh, we just want people to get the care that they need. A family member can bring the action. Anyway, it's called a civil commitment. And you'll see that we go to MUSC, Palmetto, and the VA. We've had some high profile cases come through. Uh, Ms. Bolin mm -hmm. said a Sandy Hook. She had a gun outside the school there. Fortunately, it jammed. Um, but you'll see that the schools change how they pick up uh, individuals now. Again, mental health is under one state agency. You'll see the three uh, uh, institutions we're blessed with, uh, the Center for Alcohol and Drug, uh, DeOtis. Uh, again, uh, they've opened a new building up there in North Charleston. Uh, anybody a veteran tonight? Uh, nope. Veterans. Anyway, we honor our veterans by our Veterans Treatment Court. Also, we're blessed to have uh, the VA Medical Center. It's named after Charleston uh, private named Ralph Johnson. He gave up his life jumping on a grenade uh, to save his comrades over in Vietnam. He's got a hospital named after him and that uh, frigate ship there. Yeah. Uh, fentanyl is a very uh, uh, troubling uh, phenomenon that's happening with so many overdoses and people dying. Uh, it's also important for our seniors to watch the medication they take, because sometimes by accident, they take too much uh, medication anyway. Ms. Shipman over there in Mount Pleasant has started this Wake Up Carolina, and uh, a very useful organization. They actually do uh, trainings, and they'll do a Narcan training uh, to get you, it's almost like using a nasal spray, uh, but it, it can reverse and help save a life. So consider having some Narcan, uh, not just for the younger ones, but also for that senior who may take too much of the wrong medication, may get in the wrong, uh, I guess, pillbox. Okay. Again, the involuntary commitment process, if someone's a danger to others and themselves, uh, we do different paperwork. I go over in this paperwork in great detail when we're talking to uh, law enforcement in one of our trainings. I'll leave it for today. But anyway, you'll look at the involuntary commitment process uh, we appointed an attorney to protect the legal rights, guardian and let him look after the best interest for the alleged incapacitated uh, person or for the, in this case here, the patient. Uh, two designated examiners have a hearing and then we try to get the best treatment of each restrictive setting. And then the options are inpatient, outpatient or both. Uh, I wanna make you aware of this uh, suicide. Suicide Prevention Line, 988, it's a national number, and there's always somebody there to help someone. I started four problem-solving courts, or three, to help uh, 
help give our individuals a second chance. Drug courts were started by uh, Judge Goldstein in Miami. He was a Brooklyn cop turned lawyer turned judge. Uh, we used sanctions and incentives to change behavior. We're not there to punish, so we hope to use incentives to change behavior. It's usually about an 18th month period, but if the individual completes it, uh, then the uh, time that they pled to goes away. Similarly, mental health court uh, fashioned after drug court. Uh, Judge Casey here, they, their committee in Seattle, they had a uh, off-duty fireman get killed uh, by a civil commitment patient. So uh, that's why they have the, the mental health court. Uh, we also have a veterans treatment court. I like Judge Russell as not a veteran, and he started the first veterans treatment court. And uh, we use uh, the VA and mentors to try to help our veterans in veterans treatment court. You go through a process, and then at the end, we have a uh, special speaker. Uh, this time we had Brian as our speaker at his commencement, and Brian had to pay restitution back. And can you tell who he's paying restitution back? Who's he paying? <laughs> he's actually paying it to Chief Mullen. When you're high on drugs, and I was at one house you wouldn't break into, he broke into, he broke into Chief Mullen's house. Fortunately, the chief was not home, and uh, Brian's alive, doing well. Anyway, here's the day he's paying restitution back to Chief Mullen. On the far left picture, you'll see in the far left, uh, Judge Brucey Hendricks. She was visiting us that day to start and model of a, a veterans treatment court uh, after what we were doing. We've been recognized uh, changing topics uh, twice, once for our award or, or assistance in monitoring program or guardianship. Uh, we were selected along with Phoenix, Arizona. And then I go over to law school and train law students, and they act as the ears and eyes and go and check on the wards to make sure they're okay. Uh, we've also been recognized by the National Center for State Courts, and this was this uh, conservatorship project. We were selected along with Detroit, and I was very proud of that. Here's another resource I'd have you take in, and that is called smart911.com smart911.com. It's a free service if you live in Charleston County, but you can give some of your information, your medical information uh, to this. And then when an EMS worker uh, gets that call, uh, they may be able to get some information uh, through, through dispatch to the person coming. And when seconds matter, um, having some of that background information uh, can be very helpful. And here's our online service code. If you ever need uh, help, uh, Jamie Robinson's our person. And then I'll get with you and we'll help you uh, probate the estates. Again, we do free workshops like tonight. And if you get bored of, uh, of watching me here tonight, you can always watch a tape. I've got one recorded, a couple recorded. You might hear the same corny jokes, but uh, uh, and if you can't sleep at night, you can just uh, uh, chalk it up to me and this will get you right to bed. Where do you find the um, recording? Yeah, they're right on our website at the ccprobate.com. Let me see. Do you want to jump in, uh, Jamie? Right on the website. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Judge. Um, our website is ccprobate.charlestoncounty.org. Oops, dot. Charleston County spelled out. That's correct. But if you let me know, I'm sorry, what's your name? I will email you the direct link so you wouldn't have to worry about searching for it. Anyone else who would like to do um have yeah, the Jane, same, I, I would just all to you. Yeah. yeah. Jewel Brown. Yes. I Along just sent it to everybody, Jamie. That'd be the easiest. I too. certainly will. Okay. I will do that. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Other questions, comments, anything we can help you with? I do have a question. I have sure. a couple of questions. I have a few questions. Um, what's the difference between a last will and a living will? Okay. Yeah, last will and testament, that's a document uh, where we indicate who's going to take what when. That's where we have a personal representative appointed uh, to manage the estate. Uh, we do an inventory, 
back up, we have to do an information to ears and dead disease. We do an inventory. So a will is a written document in South Carolina. It has to be in writing and witnessed by two individuals. That can be often confused with the living will. And the living will is another name for a declaration of desire for natural death. And that's that uh, document we looked at earlier, declaration of desire for natural death. Okay, that... so is the last will and, and testament a part of the estate plan or is the estate plan something completely different? Nope, uh, those 11 documents that I showed earlier, those should all be considered as part of the estate plan. Okay. Right, there's something else that I had to ask. Oh, what if you don't have like enough, um, for instance, I know I was reading somewhere where they talked about how we, because of electronics now, we have so many different um, uh, passwords. Is there a protocol for keeping track of those things or who gets yeah, the well, you're talking about digital assets and, and trying to uh, keep track yeah. of those and give people access after you pass. Yeah, right. there's, um, let me get, I'll send an article out to everybody. I know we've got a good article on the digital assets. Yeah. Okay, because I mean, everybody- That would be where the personal representative can access that and um, then share it with everyone. Okay, and- um, is there ever a time when someone has to reopen um, a probate or an estate? Yeah, many times we have estates that are probated. Uh, they then uh, discover other assets. And then when they discover other assets, they open, have to open the estate. And we have a procedure called subsequent administration. Don't ask me why, but for some reason it's $22.50. That's the fee. The state legislature set up, you pay that, you reopen the estate. It does not reopen the creditor's claim, period. Uh, and you file documents such as, uh, you know, an inventory and appraisement, which is updated. And then we have documents specific to subsequent administration, and you'd complete those. Right. So you would, you would get in touch with the probate. Um, someone in customer service at probate would be able to help. Yes. Process. Yes. Has the estate been opened or not open? Uh, well, the estate has been closed down for quite a few years. However, you now you go on the website and you search the state for unclaimed property. Right. And so came over some unclaimed property and would like to give it to, uh, well, I was the personal representative for my sister's estate and my mother's estate. And so I'd like to get those things cleared up so my sister's daughter can get that unclaimed property. Okay, yeah, we can help you with that. Okay, and in terms of getting, like for instance, I know when you usually go to the um, funeral home, they give you like X number of death certificates. What if you need more? Uh, if you need more death certificates for what you're doing, you'd have to, uh, you know, get with DHEC and and, uh, and order some or get with your funeral home director and order some. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, you can just reopen the estate. We'll give you certificates for appointment. Maybe that would accomplish what, what you need, which is to have legal authority to receive some assets. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. And if I was too verbose or didn't explain it well, just let me know and I'll I'll explain it a different way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now the other big one would be particularly heirs' property. Right. You know, people paying taxes, like I've been paying taxes on heirs' property for you know 30 years or more. And mm -hmm. how is it that one gets that stuff cleared up? I would have you get with the Center for Heirs Property. Where are you located? Uh, James Allen. James Allen. I would have you call up there, get an appointment, and go sit down with them. They can help you. And generally, it's, it's free of charge. 
Um, you may have to pay the, you know, the administrative cost, but generally it's free. And that's the Center for Heirs Property. And then tell you how to go back and do research and all the other whatever it is that you're supposed to do. Yeah, there's a way to do disposition of unclaimed assets or to name sort of a guardian ad litem uh, for the unascertained or people you can't find. Right, okay. All right, thank you. Yeah, yeah they can help you there. Other questions, comments? This is very informative. Good, good, glad you said that. If you see anything on this slideshow that we should add, let me know. We've added that 988 and we added the uh, smart 911. All good okay, would, you, uh, would you explain the Martindale Hubble one more yeah. time? Martindale is just a free service and you can go to Martindale and enlist all the attorneys around the country. And then depending on where you live, you can look under that city and see uh, the different attorneys. And then you want to find one that's in your area if it's probate or estate planning. And then you can look at their peer rating, A being the highest. And so that'll okay. give you a feel for, uh, you know, what you, remember you're the buyer. So, you know, shop attorney or two and, and figure out who can help you. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, go ahead. Um, what does it mean when you say a um, revocable trust. A revocable yeah. trust is just um, means that you set up something during your lifetime. If you change what you want to do, you can change at any time. Uh, so that's how it's revocable. And that's okay. generally what most attorneys would recommend so that if you do change your mind, you can change your document. Yeah. Okay. And when you, if there's a change in the revocable trust, does that also, do you also at the same time make a change in the last will and testament? You might, but remember, if we have a revocable living trust, um, we can just do what's called a pour over will. And it may be only a page or two, which says basically everything I own, I transfer over to my revocable living trust. Okay. So, okay. But let me back up. Most South Carolinians are fine with a trust inside a will and don't need to pay the additional fees to do a revocable living trust. Um, you've got to sit down with the attorney and see what's best for you. Granted, sure. if you own property in a number of different states or counties, uh, revocable living trust probably is the easiest way to go. Okay. So then they would, they would be able, the attorney would be able to tell you um, whether or not you should have your assets as a part of a trust or assigned to a beneficiary, specific beneficiary? Yes, most of them can tell you that, yes. I won't ask any more questions, I'll be quiet. No, no, you got one question left, you got one left. <laughs> okay, let me see. You go get an A plus for class participation. I like well, questions. Oh, thank you, you tell me I asked too many questions. No, mm -hmm. no. Okay, and, and then you've the got my number. Um, that 843-817-2039, you've got my, that's my cell. My direct okay. dial work is the 958-5193. And then you also have um, my email address, which is right there. Okay. And could you just give another brief explanation of the purpose of the power of attorney. Is that the one where yeah. people like medical? I mean, is there a difference between power of attorney for the estate or power of attorney for medical decisions? Yeah, uh, there are generally two different powers of attorney. One is for business paying bills and the other is for healthcare decisions. The differences are the, uh, the one for business uh, it has to be recorded at our Register of Deeds office. The healthcare does not. Remember also that both powers of attorney, when a person passes, uh, those power of attorney cease, and then uh, the will takes over in the estate. Do you all so follow that? Yeah. And yeah. so one not. area, the one area that I would say causes a lot of grief, typical case is um, a parent puts local child on the account 
to help pay the bills. And right. then uh, when parent passes away, that entire account goes to the local child. If that's what mom or dad intended, that's fine. Uh, but if not, uh, put the child on the account as the agent under the power of attorney. And so when mom passes, uh, the child that's on there doesn't get the entire account. It's then controlled by the will. Okay, okay, that's a good idea. So final question, and I won't ask anymore. Um, if you don't have a business, I don't have a business, I'm just retired. Um, do I have to file two different kinds of powers of attorney? No, no, yeah, the, let me, uh, I probably misnumbered. It's really called a financial power of attorney or business oh. power of attorney. It's not necessary that you have a business. It's just dealing with your finances. Yeah, okay. So one is Johnny Mansell, the other is the, your life, okay? Um, so, um, and the other thing that's confusing with a power of attorney is that you will appoint a person called an attorney in fact, okay? It's actually not a, an attorney. It's, it's really a lay person, a lay person that you, you uh, trust. Mm -hmm. Uh, all right boy this is a lot of information a little bit of yeah a little bit of everything i don't want to overwhelm you uh again mother's day is coming up father's day get the kids to pay for the estate planning um how many golf shirts can you use how many blouses you know that type of thing so is it very expensive to do an estate plan or a, yeah it can be it can be Three, four, five hundred. It can be, you know, over a thousand dollars. It can be a lot more. It depends on the complexity of your estate. Oh, okay. And most attorneys charge by the hour. Some would give you a fixed flat rate to do it. Okay. I would just talk to the attorney. My preference is probably for the fixed flat rate, so that's okay. the way you can call them and ask them questions all the time <laughs> without okay. getting a bill. All right. Thank you. Sure. Other questions, comments? I'll show you my ski vacations. All of a sudden, I don't realize I'm spending his money. Boat Trotters in North Charleston. And two years ago, we went out to Oregon and Washington. Had a lovely time. I don't know how they got me up on a horse, but they did. And on the top right, we went to the Olympic trials. Look at Anna Cockrell, my brother, or with my son, Joseph. She's so happy. And you wouldn't realize that she finished third. It's good to finish third in that race because the top three went to the Olympics. She went to Tokyo. Very proud of her. And last year we went over to Ireland and Scotland and uh, England. Did a little bit of everything and uh, actually uh, gave a portrait of Hoban to the Speaker of the House and President of the Senate over there at the Irish Parliament. Uh, did some golf, some tennis. And uh, in the middle there is a heart attack on a plate. It's a Scottish <laughs> practice. <laughs> okay, I have one final question. Sure, and sure. And if questions. people got questions about a state administration, I can go through that also. Yeah. Um, Long-term care. Okay. Uh, for instance, um, is that going to be how your assets are going to be distributed to take care of you in long-term, for long-term care? Is that a part of your um, estate plan or trust or however? Yeah, it'd be part of your estate plan, probably on the health side. And uh, the purpose of that is to, uh, you know, you, you buy insurance and then if you become incapacitated and need, to, need help or need to move to a nursing home, that'll give you some, some uh, insurance to help pay for that. Doesn't pay for it all, um, but it's another way of, um, of of covering your bases in case of when you become incapacitated. That can be rather expensive, particularly with the time we want to buy it. It's probably later in life. It's more expensive, much easier when you're younger. Yeah. Well, that leaves me out. <laughs> <laughs> it's much more affordable when you're younger. How about that? Well, if you've got some kids, that can be, that was my mother's retirement plan, my dad's. They had 10 kids and all 10 kids, yeah, all, well, everybody made it through college that was living and uh, able to support mom and dad at the end.
Yeah. Not so lucky. Yeah. Other questions, comments? How long does it take for all of this to go through? I mean, if you are probating, um, no, I guess it's nice to start the question. Could, um, gathering up the information and getting a, an estate plan done about what would be the expectation of the Oh, you mean for will and everything? I'd yeah. say three or four weeks. It just depends <laughs> on the attorney. Yeah, maybe right. shorter. Right. You're probably going to do an in, initial com, you know, a conference, and then they you send in your your documents, tell them what you want. They draft, they send them to you, uh, and if everything's okay, you come back and they and you execute. You sign those documents. Okay, and who gets to keep these things? I That's mean, a good question. Uh, most attorneys have the clients keep them. If you're going to disinherit somebody, uh, say you had two kids, you're leaving it all to one, uh, none to the other, uh, then you want to have the attorney at least retain a copy because whoever is not taking, if they find a will and tear it up, then it becomes intestate and each child takes 50%. So really? what you'll see some attorneys do is do what they call duplicate originals and uh, say that the in the will that the will cannot be uh, revoked or uh, unless uh, the will with my attorney and the will that I have here are both revoked. So that's one way to protect you against somebody tearing up a will. Hmm. Okay. All right. Other questions, comments? Thank you, Anyone? Judge. That was very informative. We appreciate it. Sure. Did anybody lose anyone? I can walk through the probate process and the different documents. So, mm. I haven't lost anybody recently. Thank goodness. Good, good. Yeah, if anybody has, let me know. Um, walk through it. Um, I have a question. Sure. Okay. Um, my dad passed like years ago. And um, uh, he had a will, and then my mom just re my mom passed going on um, four years now. Uh, sorry. And uh, I recently opened up a probate um, just because my mom stated that she left a piece of property um, for my nephew, and the only way for me to transfer it when I came down here, the lady told me that. Well, he went down there, my nephew went down there and they told him that I needed to come down and start the probate, um, get that rolling. And then with that, I'll be able to transfer the property to him. Okay, so when I was down there a few weeks ago, um, I didn't have a copy of the deed for the lot. Mm -hmm. um, but <clears throat> uh, so when I went over, I had already done all the paperwork that Ms. Broome sent. Um, filled out everything, came back, turned it in. Lo and behold, I had to ask for an extension because once I had already done everything, they told me to go over to the probate, I mean, to the um, the, the deed office to get a right. copy of the deed. So, well, I went over there to pay for the documents to be um, to be recorded and whatnot. But then when I went back over there they, to your office, they told me that I needed to... Um, the lady told me to go get a copy of the deed. So when I did that, I had to go back to the office again. And so she, what she did was she went, she pulled up the um, the probate documents when my dad um, was deceased. Right. And in in the in his on his will, it says that you know everything was on there, like um, the home that they lived in except the property was not listed that was supposed to go to my nephew, but it's listed in my mom's will. So she told me that I needed to um, get an attorney, have the attorney transfer the interest of that property to my mom. And then in turn, I will be able to go ahead and transfer it over to my nephew. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, provided that the property was in your dad's name. Yes, sir. And then see what happened. They had, he had two pieces of property um, and one they gave to my sister, and when my dad, when my dad passed, 
my mom, the attorney at that time, they went ahead and they, they switched over one of the properties to my sister. I don't know why they didn't do my nephews, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, I didn't know that when, once I pulled the deed, I didn't realize that my, you know, that was, it was then that I realized that my mom's name wasn't on it. So I just want to make sure that's the proper route because yeah, now I have I mean, to go get an attorney to do all of that. And, you know, I just want to make sure, um, I'm following the proper protocol because I really want to get this done and taken care of because this is the only thing that needs to be done. Yeah, I mean, provided, uh, yeah, what in your dad's estate, we need to get it in there and then over to whoever he listed as takers, which sounds like it was your nephew and then maybe your mom. Um, yeah, it's got to flow from one to the other. Okay, uh, I just want to make sure. All right, so I'll, I do plan to get that done ASAP. Yeah. And we just got to make sure it was non-probate. Look at that deed. If it was a, I mean, make sure it was probate asset, not a non-probate asset. Okay, I don't even know that was. I know when she pulled it up, I don't even know that that the property wasn't listed at all. So, um, there was two properties on John's Island, and like I say, one went to one's already gone to my sister, and then like the attorney that handled everything. He passed away, so like, okay, I'm in limbo now. Okay, yeah, I'd get that cleared up. Um, sorry, you having to go back and forth between the buildings. Um, if you need additional help, that Center for Heirs Property or Pro Bono may be able to help you. Okay, yeah, I wrote that down already. Good, good. Um, so when we're looking would, at one other thing, I would say, if somebody out there has a will and they're living on heirs property, it's very important that they probate the uh, will because you have six months or you have 10 years to probate a will, or then it's assumed that you died, uh, presume you died in test state without a will. So very important that if people have a will, they go ahead and get it uh, probated. So what happens if okay. they don't? If, Part, if, well, you guys it. already have a copy of the will and everything on my no. end. Well, but he, I mean, if you say that if you hadn't done it in, within 10 years. That's if you haven't delivered the original will to the court and started the probate. It, okay. They started the probate. They're just going to reopen it because they don't have an asset that was in the estate or should have been in the estate uh, was not in there. Okay. Yeah. But you said that after, if it, if it goes after 10 years, it turns into mm -hmm. intestate? Correct. And I've had a will that came in nine years, nine months. We took that one. I had another one that was 10 years in one month. We could not accept that will. So very important that if you have heirs property and you have a will, go ahead and probate it uh, within the 10 years. Okay. Uh, I guess one more question. Oh, I know. Um, my, when my sister died, she left the house to me in her will. Does that mean I own the house? That is correct. Okay. Once the, uh, you'd have to look at the will. If there's a will, um, it would come to you. Uh, is it in South Carolina? Yes, yes. Okay. It, there's You'll get what's called a deed of distribution would come to you. And then, uh, yeah, I would. You might be. I don't know if there's any mortgage on the property. No. Any, no. Okay, that's even better then. Yeah. Sometimes the mortgage comes with it. Well, that's yeah. real nice then. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. You've been sure, very helpful. Sure. Sure. Again, my cell is eight one seven twenty thirty nine. My direct dial at work is nine five eight fifty one ninety three.